you are now ready for section six, converting fractions to decimals. We're gonna do that with a process called long division. <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> all right, a fraction, we've talked about this before, it is a division problem. And all you have to do to change a fraction to a decimal is divide the numerator by the denominator. And I just want you to use the standard form of long division. No partial quotients here, just regular old long division. All right. We're going to do some guided examples with you. We're going to tag team it again. We do that with the really fun topics. All right. So first we have one half. Now I'm hoping some of you are looking at this one half saying, I know what that is already as a decimal. But we're going to do the long way to prove it as well. So I said that in order to converse that, convert this, you take the top divided by the bottom. If we write it as a long division problem, that means that the top number goes inside the division symbol and the bottom number goes outside. So we're supposed to take 2 and divide that into 1. Maybe you notice that 2 does not go into 1. So I need some more places here, but I don't want to change the value of the 1. So I can add a 0 as long as I put a decimal point here. Because isn't 1 the same value as 1.0? Yes, it is. All right, 2 does go into 10. It goes into 10 5 times. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 10 is 0. So we're almost done, but see this decimal point here? We need to bring it up. So 1 half is equivalent to 5 tenths. All right, jump down here, we have 3 and 1 fourth. And again, when you look at the 1 fourth, you might be thinking, hey, I already know what that is. But again, write it out, let's get the proof for it. Okay, this one has, a, it's a mixed fraction, a mixed number, so it has 3 in front. You don't even have to worry about that. I know in my final answer it's going to be 3 point something, because we, three, we have three and a fourth. This fourth is what needs to be changed. So again, the number on top goes inside, the number on the bottom goes outside. Four will not go into one, so we need to add a decimal point and a zero. I'm just going to bring that up there right now. Four goes into ten twice. Four times two is eight. We subtract. Ten minus eight is two. So we're not done because we have a remainder. That means I need another zero. So I'm going to drop that down. 4 goes into 20 five times. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 minus 20 is 0. Now we know that we're done. So the 0.25 is what goes after the 3. So 3 and 1 fourth is equivalent to 3.25. All right, back up at the top here. 3 fifths means that 3 is being divided by 5. So I know I'm going to need a decimal point and a 0. At least one zero to start. Five goes into 36 times. Five times six is exactly 30. And I have no remainder left, so I know that three fifths is equivalent to six tenths, or 0.6, which you're not allowed to say. So, Okay, so one and five eighths, like Mrs. Trombley just said over in the previous problem, if you have a one in, part of, in front of your fraction, in front of your mixed number, then you know that that's gonna be the whole number portion of your decimal as well. So I know I'm going to have one point something. I need to figure out what this 5 eighths is as a decimal. So that means I need to take 5 and divide it by 8. 8 goes into 50 6 times. 6 times 8 is 48. 50 minus 48 is 2. Got to add a 0 because I need a 0 remainder. 8 goes into 20 twice. 8 times 2 is 16. I'm not done yet. Oh, you can always add more zeros. Good times ahead. All right. 8 goes into 40 five times exactly because 8 times 5 is 40, which means I have no remainder. And that means that 1 and 5 eighths is equivalent to 1.625 or 1 and 625 thousandths to you and me. All right. Back up to the top. 1 eighth. We want to convert that. So that means I am taking... 1 and dividing it by 8. 8 does not go into 1, but 8 does go into 10. 8 goes into 10 one time. 8 times 1 is 8. We subtract, and yes, there is a remainder. So I'm going to add a 0. 8 goes into 20 twice. 8 times 2 is 16. 20 minus 16 is 4. We're not done yet. Add another 0 and bring it down. 8 goes into 40 five times. 8 times 5 is 40, and finally we have the 0. So 1 eighth is equivalent to 
0.125 or 125 ten hundred thousandths. All right, next example, five and four fifths. Again, the whole number we don't need to mess with. We're just going to write it in the front. I'm going to put a decimal point right after it. We need to convert this four fifths into a decimal. That means four divided by five. So five doesn't go into four, but it goes into 40. Five goes into 48 times. Five times eight is 40. Ooh, I like this one. So we have a zero remainder. We now have 5.8 or 5 and 8 tenths. Enjoy converting your fractions to decimals.